It's time to rebel against the devil. When he comes to you and tells you, you are, you are a failure in ministry. You cannot amount to anything. He's telling you the opposite because he lies as his native language. Is this Satan that's good? Walking with God, let me tell you the truth. If anybody tells you walking with God is just full of laughter, you are joking. We are asking that the Lord conquer us. And you know, it's good to understand time. He said, when you're 43, I'll be able to trust you with the full anointing of your calling. But I didn't know that there will be tests. There will be tests. A lot of tests that went down. The final test was... Um, Meanwhile, there were, there were tests. Let me tell you a few. Um, the first festival of glory that we had, I was sent by the office to be in Houston for a training, Houston, Texas. I was the one that prayed. I prayed the training. I canceled the training through prayer. The second time the nomination came, it was during IEC. So I cancelled it again. The Lord said I should that my job expired on the 28th of September 2020. I didn't know why he said that until I turned in the resignation on the 5th of October. Then I realized we had senior officers training program. That's the three weeks course that you do and write attendant exams before you are posted, you are promoted to the first manager, manager kid. So I was the only one that was not there in the hotel that was supposed to take that program. And they were calling me, why are you not coming? I, I left. And I refused to come, not because I didn't have the intellectual capacity to get promoted. That was the easiest of, that was the easiest of, the easiest thing for me is to pass an examination. And the last time we had that kind of a test, I scored 74%. I was the highest. The person following me scored 58. And so in terms of intellectual capacity, that wasn't a challenge. But I heard God. He said, your job has expired. And based on God's dealings with me, if I will disobey when I know the will of God, something terrible that will take me a long time to solve will befall me. Hallelujah. As I was obeying in these matters, I was noticing that the anointing of God upon my life was increasing. We went to uh, Jalingo. And, uh, you know, when the gift of faith is in operation, you believe everything is possible. And it's, it's, it's a stirring by the Spirit of God. But the dimensions of the gift of faith I experienced there was unequal. I've never operated like that in terms of the gift of faith. I could, I prayed for the deaf on the first night and the blind saw. The Lord said, just pray for the deaf. And I prayed for the deaf. 14 deaf people began to hear and uh, one blind woman began to see. But I didn't pray for the blind. I prayed for the deaf. As instructor and when we left the meeting sometimes even before we come to the meeting God is people are already manifesting so I now went and asked God what what why are you anointing me like this what is what do you want to achieve he opened my eyes and he showed me something which I want to share with you are you with me that there was a certain minister that was supposed to be operating within that jurisdiction, the northeast angle. 
Yes. He was previously there and he was anointed. God set up a spiritual throne in the northeast and he was the first one that sat on it. But it came to pass that he left that region and went somewhere else. He's somewhere else in Nigeria now. He has not died. But he has lost significance as far as the scheme of divine things is concerned. He said the reason for that grace I experienced was that I just entered into that throne that was that the man occupied. I, I was so powerful. Now, most of you have seen the anointing on my life a little. But I, I don't believe that I've been really anointed in Makodi. Anything you saw in Makodi is not what I'm talking about. The real anointing doesn't come on me when I'm here. It's when I'm not here. That's when it comes. And that day it came powerfully. It's as if, if, if I tell you, die, you'll be able to die. You'll die. You will die. You know, that was a level of power. And I was afraid not to say what God doesn't want me to say because it will happen. It was, it was a strange moment. Imagine you pray for the deaf and then the blind begin to see. So the day we now prayed for everybody, the deaf, blind, the cripple, it was strange. We went somewhere for lunch and they were telling me, they invited us, the relatives to our pastor there, so we had to go. So we finished eating and I said, sorry pastor. This one has this, 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 this one has this sickness, this one has this sickness, this one has this sickness. I said, okay, no problem. Can you come early? Let them sit in the front. So when that thing comes, we'll begin to attend to them one by one. So the anointing came, I ministered, then I went there and began to minister one by one. And healing took place before we ended that strange strange dimensions i could i could cast out a devil by just watching the person that is possessed just watching and smiling the, the demons will leave now when i left that meeting we came back and i was praying again and then god now reminded me he said are you aware that you're almost 43 because he told me that at the age of 43 i would i will trust you with the anointing of your calling. I will trust you with it. The mistake I made was I did not ask him the, what he meant by the anointing of my calling. That was a great mistake I made, which I corrected in just. Are you with me? When working with God, don't take for granted that you know what he's saying. Because you don't. Hallelujah. Because of that, now that I realized that the fullness of time had come, I wanted to find out where we were on God's map. Then he takes me to the book of Genesis chapter 26 that I opened to us yesterday and I'd like us to look at it um, a little more. Because our efforts until the end of this year is to bring every one of us into alignment as to what the Lord intends to do in the days to come. Genesis 26, we read yesterday from verse 19. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of spring water. And the headmen of Gera did strive with Isaac's headmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac. Because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sit. I'd like you to understand what is happening here. A man is trying to 
entrench, establish his destiny. But there were several territories that rejected his destiny. Even though his dad had sojourned in this place before and he had benchmarks in the territory to lay claim to the land as ancestral property. Because all he did was to dig again the wells of his father Abraham. And because his father had stayed in the location, it naturally fell to him as inheritance. And he went to explore his inheritance. And i like you to understand that he, this is desert. And in this desert place, if you find a well, it was a sign of blessing. And it was unfortunate that the Philistines could fill a well with it. You know, when you have a well, it's not just you that will benefit from it. It becomes a community blessing. But because Abraham's name was upon it, the Philistines seeking to reduce his influence did not mind to suffer test in the desert if that test will be occasioned by limiting Abraham's influence. And unfortunately, Isaac inherited this signature of battles. And the, first, the name of the first well was Isaac. Isaac. Which means to strive. And I realized that uh, this is my story. Isaac. I just counted how many now? Counted 17 pastors. 17 pastors that I thought were my friends that went behind me to stab me. So I counted 17 recently. 17. That's not normal. And it's not something you should pray for. Alright? Because if you are not, if the Lord has not helped you emotionally, if he has not helped you emotionally, you are not likely to come out of a very close range betrayal. But what was happening was those were realities that were built around the Isaac experience. It is characterized by great strife. Hallelujah. And there is a difference between Isaac and Sitna. Whereas Isaac is talking about strife. And most of the strife that you will meet in ministry will not be by head-on collision. It will be backstabbings and all kinds of stuff that will take place. Hallelujah. In just here, just one of my friend's younger brother went to Joss to meet a friend of his. So that his friend was in a pastor's meeting. Are you with me? Pastor's meeting, you know. So this guy just came and joined the pastor's meeting because his brother was there. And then the general overseer came and the first thing the general overseer began to talk about was me. And you know what? The things he said to them was a lie. And that guy, knowing my friend, called my friend and said, see, this is what... Meanwhile, I was sitting here in Makodi, and it was his sec. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, you know my way. When that happened, hallelujah, it's not something to talk about. But I got the information about it. And I got the information of so many preachers that some have not met me before. Yeah. He said. A conference was put together like this. And a senior minister who is like 60 years old. He's 60 years old this year. Was invited to preach. And then he now pointed and said, okay, you stand. And he asked the young man that he asked to stand. Is there any preacher in this country? Anybody at all? Because he was talk, saying that the younger generation are indisciplined, you know, all of that, all of that. They don't have people that can discipline them, you know, all of them. And he not called that guy and say, stand up. Is there anybody in your life 
that you have that if he says stand here you will stand so the guy now called my name meanwhile that guy are you with me the guy that called my name our pastor in that city doesn't know him you understand what I'm talking about? so when the guy called my name this 60 year old preacher stopped his message and the next thing he preached throughout was about me that this young boys that will be giving themselves titles and when he said that the congregation left now was i the one responsible for their living <laughs> they all left and he became more angry the day me and him met on a flight to lagos we were in first class business class so you know it's a small area he didn't even know me that was when I confirmed that he doesn't know how I look like. But it's his sick. Hallelujah. That's my story. Then when his sick didn't work, it became sitna. This one is contention. Contention. A preacher invited me to minister. And then uh, I came. Finished preaching, sat down, took the microphone. And then, before the same audience, right, began to analyze my message. I did that the first day, I still came again. I did that again the second day. And the idea is. It was a plan to demean me. But you know what? I'll, I'm already there. Okay? And I was supposed to preach for two days. I preached for two days as planned. But the two days were intended to you know we are followers of Jesus. And we should never forget that. So I didn't say anything. He didn't even know that. Because I was excited. I was excited. Then when we now finished the meeting, he now came. He now started arranging for another meeting. So I now told him, it might be difficult for me to come. You know what the guy said? He got angry. It was him that got angry at me that I I was not happy the way he <laughs> that's called sitna there are some capital laws that were given to us as ministers one of them is servant of the Lord must not strive that's not part of our preoccupation Hallelujah. Meanwhile, Amen. A certain minister of the gospel, in order for him to probably, maybe his intention was to score some points. He um was telling his members during workers meeting that when God speaks to me I'm not sure so he's, he's the voice that makes me sure so so one of the people in that place now came and told us I drove him out of my office don't, don't don't talk like this against a man of God hallelujah meanwhile other things the other things that you should not hear the, that pastor was saying it saying it. so the person now went to my friend pastor Gideon and told him this is it was pastor Gideon that now met me and opened my eyes and said okay
this person talking about me I've given him two cars two two cars before and the person doesn't have any reason to want to it's not in the person's interest for that to happen but you know what that's the way of sit now you can't escape contention a preacher that I used to invite here came and told one of my pastors those days that God has left me that there's a crime I committed against heaven so Jesus has left me that he should find his way if not what is coming to strike me might affect me. So when he told that my pastor, my, that my pastor left because of that prophecy. Do you know that these things are not prayer points? The reason why they are not prayer points is because they are just manifestations. They are just happening in the natural. Because I know what God has told me here. And that's what matters. Sitna is the place of contention. Where people will lie against you. People will try to frustrate you. It is when you have gone through that that God now opens the next door. Meanwhile, it is very good to be persecuted. It is very good to be under pressure for people to lie against you. Because it will build your capacity with God. If that persecution pushes you to God, it becomes a blessing. You realize that when we started this ministry, there were a clique of pastors, there were five of them that said, me, I think I can come to this town and start a ministry without informing them. That they will see how I will fulfill that ministry. I didn't know there were people in town that will go and take permission from to do ministry. So I kept quiet and we continued. The miracle that happened was that when we did IEC, all those ministers came there. And they were asking Shala to give them seat among the ministers. I don't think there was anybody who stopped from coming to the minister's section. It means we didn't see them and we still did ministry. Verse 22. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that, they strove not. You may not know, but... Um, A pastor somewhere in North Bank that claimed I was using diabolical power to do miracles and that a pot was in my office. How many of you have visited my office? Have you come in there? You saw pot there. The, the guy knows my office more than me that there's a pot there. I consult with that pot before I come out to preach the gospel. He knows my a lecturer from Union Agri said, he, he, me and him visit the same nat native doctor. I will patronize the same native doctor. That he doesn't deny that he... he <laughs> but it's the same native doctor, me and him. <laughs> and not to tell you of all kinds of statements that people have made against me on Facebook. And you know my way, I don't respond. 
I don't respond. All of that was Sitna. The Bible says he removed from dens and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord has made room. That means he has given us a place for our destiny to find adequate fulfillment. So that's the season we have entered now. Rehoboth. And in this season, what God is doing is that he's giving us room. Are you with me? For now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. What God gave them was room. They translated the room to fruitfulness. There's a, there's a partnership there. God gave room and then it was their own responsibility to ensure that they were fruitful within the scope of the room. So while all the persecution and all the fights took place, and thank God for all the people that persecuted us in the first place, because it made me look for God there. Eh? You know, when people are expecting you to fail, plenty, and there are many, so you now tell yourself that, okay, I won't fail. How are we, how am I not going to fail? Me and God. So this is what the Lord said. That is the time for room. He'll give us room. So we need to translate that room to fruitfulness. We need to translate it to coverage. We need to translate it to impact. That is why we are praying this prayer. First of all, to ensure that every one of us is able to access the room. Right? And so just in case you are still in Sitna, we, want, we are holding a refresher course to break every yoke so that you can enter into the place where God gives room. So that's what he has done. He has given us room. So we must translate that room to everything that we did not have the opportunity to do because of the contention. Is that clear? All right. Um, in keeping with this, I want to step down and show you two things that will enable our prayer. Because every one of us must pass into this economy of room. Everyone. No one is allowed to be left out. The Lord has given us room. Do you realize what happened? All, at least the pastors in this town that contended with me, when the anointing of God began to increase, they didn't even apologize. They just went and we... Man of God. So we just, I just pretended as if... The Lord has made what? Room for us. So we shall be fruitful in the land. That's where we are. It's time for us to be focused. I'm trusting God for one third of Makodi to be saved by next year. One third. I went around not too long ago and saw this hold of cultism on our city. I'm trusting God that we will reduce the number of cultists to a point where the ones left will resign themselves. It will no longer be lucrative. And I have one year to deliver that. They, you, you see, when God gives you room, you need to determine what the room will produce. You see, we shall be fruitful. That's all that Jacob, eh? Isaac saw. Isaac saw I've been trying to expand. But every time I make an attempt at expanding, there's contention. There's this potential to expand. I've not found a place that will coincide with my intentions for expansion. So when the Lord gave him room, ah, may we interpret this room to mean many more things than Isaac interpreted. 
for you, for you it might be marriage. God gives you room to marry. That's the easiest. That's the easiest part of the room we are talking about here. Meanwhile, if that's your level, God will give you room in the name of Jesus. Amen. But that room is to be translated to some to fruitfulness of diverse sorts, of diverse kinds. So I want to announce to us that we, we are starting ministry next year. Everything that we have been doing is sitting and in Isaac. Eh? That's not that's not the thing God has called us to do. Everything to this point has been Isaac and Sitna. But we are entering into Rehoboth. So the real blueprint that God has given us, He has given us an opportunity to implement it, to execute it. So we are entering into that moment of execution as ordained by God. The Lord has given us what? Room. Because this is not this meeting is not um, a meeting for me to give updates. I would have told us, given us a little insight into the kind of room that I'm talking about. Indeed, the Lord has given us room. Great room. So we are trusting him that from next year we'll transform that room into bountiful fruitfulness. Return on investment. To the kingdom of God. Profit for the kingdom of God. And for my city. This city. Let's reduce the number of unbelievers by one third of the population. Because the Lord has given us what? When we were in Sitna, we, we can't even believe that we can deplete hell that fast. Because there were other issues that were contending with us. There was a time here we did night vigil and the neighbors said they would take us to court for noise pollution that we should prepare we'll meet in court now you see that is sit now all right this is where we are can you see just this place this way just this place is where we are but there are people that would have wished that even this place we didn't have it. And so everything that you have seen is contention. We got beyond that and then other levels of contention. There was a time like that. That guy that built that upstairs there came and said, Oh, meanwhile, I know the reason why he was complaining. It was not because our boundaries are closed. We generated something here and it disturbed so many things. He came and said, Kai! There's no way we can help you. Because Jesus taught us how to cast out devils. He didn't tell us how to call them back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing he didn't teach us. How to call evil spirits back. There's no way you can pass into the fullness without going through these traction points. These traction points are designed and allowed by God to build character, to build strength, to build security and trust in God. So that when you have room, you will still have strength of character, integrity. And you, you will not have lost the sincerity of your soul. Which are points the Lord will impress upon in order to bring you back to order. If there is an angular shift. Are you still with me? Alright. So to ensure that each and every one of us enter into this season of Rehoboth. That's why we are waging war against limits and limitations. That's why we are introducing you to governmental prayer. The kind of prayer that you make that moves the hand, hand of God. Because it is consistent with justice and judgment. Are you with me? Now the intention is that every one of us will make the leap into that, that place. I know Pastor Jude, he is... An industrialist. He has come to me with all kinds of things that God has given him. Recipes. Oh my God. Bro. It is now that those things can happen. Not that time. It is now. We have room now. If you had started, fire would have caught it. Fire. Because 
sit now will swallow everything you are trying to build isaac had to wait he, he, he had intentions had blueprints he didn't try to implement it in isaac when he came to rehoboth that's when he said ah the lord has what room so we can now begin to manifest the products that he has given us the grace to be able to fashion and anyone that does not go through the corridor of his second sit now when he grows in god something will cut him off in the future because he didn't pass through the process that god allows his men to go through so that they can be made are you with me it's when you start making money much that much more than you have the ability to spend that's when we know if you have realized the reason for which god is allowing the money to come there are many more lives god will want you to touch and god will see whether all those things that come will translate to your wardrobe the design of your wardrobe the volume he will he will check you but that strength of character to understand the reason why grace is coming the reason why anointing is coming the reason why funding is coming is so that we can channel it in such a way as will give him glory if you have not come to that point the things that god will give you will become the first things that will destroy you the anointing he gives you will destroy you the funding he gives you it will destroy you so it is when you pass through sitna and isaac that the strength of character is built for you to understand that in the kingdom of god god operates with purpose every resource he makes available should be translated imp should engender the implementation of purpose you know i'm trying to find out when last i bought clothes the lord has made room for us suddenly people now buy me clothes now because that's not the reason for anything that god is doing you understand that's not the reason there are lessons you need to learn to survive rehoboth and you must have learned them in isaac and in sydney let's take a journey because of time i will not be able to go far but i want us to go deep my intention is to break yokes so that everyone will enter that place where there is room. Is that clear? All right. So I'm going to give you a little capsule. And this first capsule is on the subject of witchcraft. We need to um, knock some things off so that every one of us can come into that place where there is room. Witchcraft. In my script here, I wrote this is the ability to control, dominate, manipulate natural things using a spirit. This is the ability to control, dominate, and manipulate natural things using a spirit. In witchcraft, there are indeed no shortage of types. In witchcraft, there are indeed no shortage of types. We need to support that from the book of Malachi chapter 5. Malachi chapter 5. There are no... Malachi chapter... Micah, sorry. Micah, Micah, Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5 verse... Let's take verse 12. There are no shortage of types. I will cut off witchcrafts. So you underline S. I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand... And thou shalt have no more soothsayers. It means that there are many methods, many ways by which 
control, domination, and manipulation can take place. There are many ways. There are many methods. So witchcraft has numerous types. However, the reason for this lecture is both to educate and to empower. As long as the spirit is involved to achieve the role of control, the role of manipulation, the role of dominion, it is witchcraft. And there are many types, as you have seen in scripture. Is there a way cut off? Die. Witchcraft. Now, so the next question is, what types do we have? And how do I know that I'm a victim of any? What types do we have in view of the fact that he said that he will cut off, die, witchcraft? There are two types. But... Each of these types has subtypes. So for this evening, I'm going to major on paganism and evidences and symptoms that show that you are a victim of paganism. Paganism. Paganism is an umbrella name for religions other than the Abrahamic faiths. Have you got anything? Is it paganism? Is what? Is another name other than another name for religions other than the Abrahamic faiths? Now, the Abrahamic faiths include Christianity, includes Judaism, includes Islam. So the broad name for every operation that is not defined within the Abrahamic faiths is what paganism is. Did you get that? So we have established that the Abrahamic faiths include what? I can't hear you. Christianity. Judaism and Islam. Now, why do we call Islam an Abrahamic faith? I need to establish it before we go on. Are you, are you still with me? You must have heard um, Islam's presentation During the celebration of Idel Malud, Idel Malud, Islam's presentation. What? Okay, that's the bet of. There's another one again. There's Malud. Okay, the bet. Okay, the bet of Muhammad. Fetri. Huh? Now that celebration. That is called Eid al Fitri. In the Quran, it is, you know, in the Bible, it was Isaac that was to be sacrificed, and then there was a ram caught by the horn, and that was now eventually the substitute. But in the Quran, what is written there is that it was Ishmael that was to be sacrificed. And so Ishmael happens to be the lineage of the Arabians. And it happens to be that their faith, which they still connect to Abraham, even though it is a different faith from that which Isaac had, because Isaac's faith was Judaism, Ishmael's faith became Islam. Do you understand that? But they still claim that Abraham is their ancestor. So Abraham is the ancestor for Christians, for Muslims, and for Jews. Do you, do you understand it now? 
Good. So any religion or supernatural practice or spiritual practice that doesn't have linkages with the Abrahamic faith is what we put under the broad heading, what? Paganism. Maybe I need to bring a few scriptures here. If you are still with me, say amen. First of all, my attempt is to educate you, first of all. Then when I've educated you, then we'll have the understanding that is needed for us to prosecute a few matters. The intention for which we do what we do is to ensure that every one of us moves into the room that God has made available for us in this time. All right, let me... Pick a few scriptures here. And uh, how I wish I had a board. How I wish I had a board. No, don't worry. Um, can we do something quickly here in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4? This lecture I'm giving is a type that uh, I may never complete this lecture. So it's a type that you need to make notes out of. One critical thing about Judaism is in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. And every rabbi must quote this scripture. Every rabbi must quote this scripture during his delivery either as a reminder or a blessing somewhere during his delivery he has to quote that scripture and that is the nature of the Abrahamic faith can somebody help me with that scripture he said hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord Why is this scripture important? This scripture is important because every non-Abrahamic faith preaches polytheism that there are many gods. And the significance of the Abrahamic faith is that it preaches that there is one God. Is that clear? Oh, you are not with me. Follow me. So Christianity, for instance, preaches the oneness of God. Right? Islam does that. Have you heard them say that? In fact, the major challenge that the Islamic apologist has with New Testament Christianity is that we claim that we have three gods. In New Testament theology, the Godhead is different from God, the person. The Godhead is his administration. The Godhead, in his administration, you will see various manifestations he does as the ultimate authority, as the administrator, and as the sustainer of that which he has administered. You are not with me. Let me try to bring you up to speed with what I'm trying to explain. Have you read that scripture that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life? Have you read that scripture before? Now, it was the Father. That loved the world and in view of his love for the world he decided to do something and what he, did he do he sent an administrator to pay the price for the failings of humankind you see the one that loved are you with me is portrayed like a different in a different capacity and then that one that loved 
came into an administration in order to reach humankind, for instance. He came into an administration. He was the one that loved, but he was playing a different role in the administration to rescue man. He gave his only begotten son. Another member in that council, in that government, had to play a role in executing the required administration that will satisfy the claims of divine justice. Because it was against the justice system of heaven that man was sentenced to death. And if man was going to be free from that justice system, the claims of the justice system is going to be fulfilled. And so we see God manifesting as a man in order for him to satisfy the claims of divine justice. And that was accomplished on the cross. And that which Jesus accomplished through his suffering, the Holy Spirit is here to ensure that we enter into the full scope of his implication. Now, it is, if you see the way it was wrought out, you have the, there is, a, there is a possibility for you to think that the one that loved is separate from the one that was given and that also is separate from the one that sustains. But the, this is theology. In theology, the word separate is not accurate. It's wrong. They are different, but they are not separate. And in the frame of reference, just like you can do something with your hand, it was not your spirit that did it. Your spirit is different from your body. But in this arrangement as man, it is not separate. It is one entity. Exactly. So, we have seen that the members of the Godhead, they are indeed distinct, but they are not separate. So, we have in the New Testament, we have a clearer view of the operations of God. If God wants to achieve something, it is Jesus second member of that Godhead that goes to pay the price for the legal establishment of that thing. And once there's a legal premise that is gained, it's the Holy Spirit that supports and sustains that new reality. So we have a clearer vision into how God implements his policies and how he establishes his administration. And there is no other religion anywhere in the world that gives us the practical outlook of how God implements his plans and his purposes. And that is a subject that is contained in the administration that is revealed in the Godhead. Is that clear? Now, so, uh, 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 the Jews quote that scripture a lot. The Lord, thy God, is one God. So the hallmark of the Abrahamic faiths is the emphasis about the one God. Because everything, the message of, of, of paganism is that there are many gods. So, when we say many gods, what they actually mean is that there are many spirits. Because there are many spirits that are not subject to the government of God, there are many possible ways by which the supernatural can be engaged to influence the natural, to dominate it, to what? To manipulate it. You get that? The first thing you'll be taught when you are accepted in the brotherhood of witchcraft is the many gods, polytheism. Second thing you'll be taught is that the earth is a temple, right? And that's why in witchcraft there are many natural things that people put together, the lizard of a gizzard of alligator plus the alligator pepper plus the hair of monkey because in witchcraft it is thought that this physical world is the temple is a temple and if you have the wisdom to know what and what to bring together you can generate spiritual energy meanwhile the lecturer that is in this temple is a spirit being trying to bring perspective and so this spirit being has the capacity through the wisdom it makes available 
to empower the followers of such a spirit to be able to influence things, manipulate things, control things, and dominate. And, are you still here? And because spirits are many, there are many types. And that's why in the book of Micah chapter 5, he said, well, I will cut off your witchcraft. So in my research, I found a few types. And what triggers my research is when I go to the field and I meet people that are possessed of devils. Uh, people that are running errands for covens, for, for uh, witchcraft communities, for witchcraft enclaves. When I meet new expressions and I see the way they manifest, I update my little journal. <laughs> So that I can instruct others also in the light of the experiences I've had on the field. A theologian that is locked up in a seminary will not have this content that I want to give you. This is coming directly from the field. It's not like um, in the United States of America, we have Dr. Stella. You remember Dr. Stella, the woman that spoke about hydroxychloroquine? She is on the field meeting patients. And then we have the chief of disease control in the U United States, and uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Anthony Fauci has never been to the field. Maybe for the past 25 years, he has not seen a patient. But they are the ones that establish and formulate policies that drive... Yeah. I hope you are aware that that is, is an offense in this country. Please, Mimi, educate your... That there are grievous offenses that can, you, you can attract by being careless enough to allow your phone to disturb this house. Now, Fauci has not been on the field for like 25 years thereabout. And they are the ones that are in position to, as the lady that is on the field on medical matters. Because she's the one seeing patients. She can plot a graph of the effectiveness of a certain drug. So if we are operating correctly, we should be getting feedback from the field people in order for us to... Um, that should influence our policy direction, policy making. So I preach as a field marshal. Right? A theologian that is locked up in a seminary doesn't have this experience. In fact, he is likely to say there is nothing like witchcraft. We should, uh, go and say that. And when he finished saying that, he would still send his mother to us for their deliverance. May the Lord help us. <laughs> Are you still with me? All right. So I actually drew up a course. This is a course. I took it from my course file. I drew up a course on witchcraft. In order to um, equip us to be able to handle things that are supernatural. And you know the reason why I had to go into my case file is because I want everyone to enter into Rehoboth. Anything that is designed to hold you back so that you will not enter into Rehoboth is my enemy. We have waited for long and we are not the author of time. The author of time and season happens to be Jehovah himself. So even though we are pregnant with destiny, destiny operates with the principle of the fullness of time and we are not in control of time. The Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together, doing the same things they normally do, but that day became an exception because heaven invaded their space. Because it was the fullness of time. And that's why it is needful for you to be consistent in your followership, in your faithfulness, because the one that determines what the fullness of time is, is Jehovah. Whose authority? It is by whose authority that times of visitations are determined. Are you with me? Alright, so when the fullness of time comes, if God shows up, he, he will walk with the people that he finds. Because it's 500 people that were told to wait in Jerusalem. But when the fullness of time came, there were just 120. So he had to walk. So there are many people that are ordained for a certain visitation because they are not consistent in their knowledge of God's calendar, they will eventually miss out of that which God is doing, and it's not God's fault. 
They were not faithful enough to fit into the description of the fullness of time. Hallelujah. We are still on the subject of paganism. And I decided to take a very broad stroke so that I could narrow these things out and narrow them down to um, our daily experiences and how supernatural forces are employed to limit our possibilities and to cause our lives to go on a tangent that is inconsistent with the will of God. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, somebody is asking me a question in the congregation there. And the person is saying, well, I don't have any covenant with demons and devils. I am a believer in Christ Jesus and I'm on my way to heaven. So this witchcraft thing you're talking about, how does it apply to me? Good question. Now I'll try to give you some scriptural answers. Who was the one that even asked that question in the first place? Hmm? Is it me that is asking my question? I'm trying to. <laughs> so maybe somebody saying that. I'm born again. I'm doing stuff. I'm just doing my own thing. And uh, don't have anything to do with witchcraft. I was never a witch. And I don't plan to be a witch. So how is it that you are teaching us about witchcraft? Huh? So what? Well, my life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. All right? Amen. Okay. By the time I begin to minister, maybe you'll find out why. Someone that has a spirit at his disposal, how competent is that person to bring injury to you? Let me tell you my own personal experience. When I was posted to this town, you didn't know me then, so you don't know the house I stayed. I stayed in one place that if I take you there, you'll not believe. What, that's, what, that's the one you know. I was somewhere before I went to. What, and that place, the reason why they didn't take that house, that I came and met that house, was because the house was haunted. Spirits used to appear inside of the house. How many of you have ever been to a place that is haunted? Oh, I'm, I'm alone. I'm all alone now. All right. So the house is haunted. You might come to the sitting room one day and you see a frog and you try to kill it and then the thing will jump and when it jumps down it disappears. I know you say I'm crazy now. This guy has come. So my house was haunted. And that was why nobody could stay there. And I came and paid for two years. <laughs> paid for two years. Rogged the whole place. Because I like praying on rock. And I got there, and you hear a sound as if there's a human being. Then you leave your room and come to the sitting room, then there's nobody. Then you go back to your room, and then the sound continues. And then all kinds of stuff, crazy things will be taking place, things will get missing, and all of that. But I paid for two years. So, so many of you would have expected that because I'm born again, now that the house is haunted, I just showed up, then the thing will just stop. A spirit is involved. If the spirit is going to stop, and you did not send the spirit, the reason why the spirit is there is that there is a spiritual law. There is a covenant that gives the spirit legitimacy. The spirit doesn't even know. He doesn't send you. Gives it legitimacy. So when you come into the space, you now set up your own priesthood to give legitimacy to other spirits that are superior in outlook to those ones invading your space. It is because of your priesthood that you can sanitize the space. So I started doing my own priesthood. Doing my own priesthood. We're holding prayers there every day. And then do night vigils every Friday. And it was consistent. And in the eighth month, I came out on Saturday morning to my well to get water. And then my neighbor now climbs a ladder and says, Pastor, good morning. You know what? That guy had been sick for one year. 
it is those prayers that we were praying unknown to us the influence of our priesthood affected his own compound too and arrested the spirits that were tormenting him and he got healed and then came to see the people that created that thing that led to his liberty that greet the greeting he was sending to me was the first day he was leaving his room after one year he just noticed that he could stand up and then he came and the first thing he did was to climb a ladder so that his head could be above the fence to look into the other side and then to a small ball he said pastor he said pastor well done that's how my neighbor became healed so the spirits that used to visit him they stopped visiting because we did something that introduced some stronger spirits into the space and that was how our own space was protected so that's what we call sanitation environmental sanitation don't worry if they even bury the human being in the building and and that's where witches used to come and meet in the night and sing ah forgotten that song that uh, there's one song which is sing it energizes them and they buried something there to make it very easy for them to access the place you can rent that house and shut that thing to say that spirits cannot influence the natural is to say that you don't need eyes to see so many of us preach theology flat scripture as if we preach we preach scripture on the surface we don't know that every scripture is actually a witness of spiritual realities and your bible are gateways to spirit dimensions the people are you with me the people that wrote the new testament for instance it was not a book they read before they wrote it was a spirit that came upon them so they were writing under the influence of a spirit if you begin to read that book and that same spirit that came upon them to write comes upon you it will give you understanding beyond the book is that true you are not with me all right there was this guy that enrolled for taekwondo so when he enrolled for taekwondo they began to take him through some lessons and they saw that he was learning very fast so they they i mean taekwondo here or not in china here so the teacher now decided to give him the notebook the textbook so that he can practice at home because he was learning very fast you understand no, you don't understand the only way that can happen is that that book was an access point to spirit dimensions so he started doing things that were not in the book that was how union Greek began to win gold medals because there was one man there that knew how to do what was not in the book that was a man that went on break and ate and came back and his weight went beyond feather weight so what the coach did was that he gave him three days dry fasting and his weight reduced so when they weighed him he was within the weight range during the competition he was the one that broke the leg of the, the taekwondo man of our school that used to move like that <laughs> <laughs> he broke his leg he had he had won or he had already won he had won uh, this our man but to to teach him <laughs> broke, broke the leg there are gateways to spirit dimensions the, the bible i study the bible and i get overwhelmed the wisdom of the first first writers this inspiration the spirit that came upon them comes upon them and especially when I read the writings of Apostle Paul. That's why I believe I continue with ministry. The same spirit he has is what is upon me. And I contacted that just studying the Bible. Are you with me? Good. The thing about the spirit realm is that it will take a mortal to open the door of that realm. 
In witchcraft, there is a lot of capacity building because you need to know many, many things to understand how spirits operate. And that's why it's called a walk with God. Because you might start today and God will overlook some things and you think you are okay. When you outgrow some levels, God will begin to emphasize the things he overlooked before. It's a walk with God. In order to know the way a spirit operates, you, you are going to be learning consistently. Daily. Daily. And then when you have known many small, small lessons, those small, small lessons form a module. A module that will give you some capacity in administering kingdom things. That's how it is in the other way. Are you with me? Or you are not with me? Okay. Now, you see, normally when I want to move in a supernatural, I say, uh, where are you? I will ask my keyboardist to play. You ask him to play for you if it will change anything. Ask him. Come and say, okay, yes, this is the way uh, pastor used to do it. Oh yeah, play for me. It won't change anything because there are many little, little things you are supposed to know that forms a module. On the strength of all those little things, there are some things you can administer. And so, witchcraft invests a lot in capacity building. Should I tell you something? Oh, you don't understand? Are you with me? If a man is more educated in darkness than you are in light, he will conquer you. Even though light is superior to darkness. So this thing we are talking about is, is twofold. Education and submission. A follower of the devil that is submitted, more submitted to Satan than you are to God will defeat you in battle. And I have seen preachers, preachers of the gospel that entered into some communities because there were questions about their loyalty to Jesus. They did not have the needed standing to contend with the infrastructure of darkness that was rooted into that land. And what happened is that their efforts to bring light into the territory, it failed. It failed. 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 So, Abrahamic faiths are monotheistic. Abrahamic faiths are all rooted in that one scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. The Lord thy God is one God. In paganism, there are many gods, many spirits. Paganism is an interface, it's a lecture, it's a learning process of the ways of spirits. And pagans have come to discover that spirits have areas of specialization. And so if they want to bring rain, there is a certain kind of spirit that is responsible for bringing rain. If they want to make a barren woman to become fruitful, there's a certain kind of spirit that has that specialty. Have you ever read the scripture that says, it is the blessings of the Lord. It maketh rich. And it added what? Now, the reason why it added no sorrow is because the original spirit that makes rich is the Holy Ghost. So when it makes you rich, Nothing is added. But if another spirit in the kingdom of darkness promises you wealth, he can give you wealth, but he will give you, he will give you what is inherent in the spirit. The spirit's specialty too will be mixed with that wealth. So you become an advertisement for that spirit. Huh? People will be attracted to your wealth and they will see that other aspect. Meanwhile, that other aspect is the signature of the spirit upon your life. Because that's not the original spirit that is designed to make you wealthy. It make it rich. And what? It added no soul. Because when I went to Lagos in the market, the market in Lagos, and I saw 
guys with goods, guys with all of that. Ah, and somebody was a trader was giving me insight. Say that one was his manhood that he gave. Oh, this one, this one is in the market in Lagos. I thought it was buying and selling. I thought that was what it was, but there were things given because if you are not operating with the holy ghost and you become rich he will add that spirit will add something but you see the thing about the holy ghost is that the holy ghost doesn't have any area of specialization the moment there is a manifestation of insufficiency in any matter whatsoever insufficient you just feel that you don't have the capacity to be able to live up to the expectation that's when you need the Holy Ghost. As long as you feel you are sufficient in yourself, he won't come. Then when he shows up, he will give you capacities that you never thought was possible through your life. For the Bible says it is the spirit. The spirit that quickens. It makes a life. There are several things dead in your life now. Only the spirit can what? So you will need to go and to the forest to find the rain spirit in order for rain to come. You will need to go and find the spirit of fertility in the water to make a barren woman conceive. But in the Holy Ghost. Ask pagans, there is no one spirit that has everything. The dwarfs, the dwarf spirits, those are the messenger demons. That are sent on errand by enchantment. Those are the ones our politicians used to win an election. Oh, I am an. If you want to cause somebody harm, those people that you can pay them money and they will afflict somebody for you is the dwarfs that they use. In order for you to be able to maintain three of those dwarfs in your compound, do you know the kind of sacrifices you will need to be? making for those dwarfs to be able to stay there and then people will come and pay you money and say they want to afflict her with an incurable sickness he will mobilize one of the dwarfs when the dwarf is being mobilized that's when you will hear there's a most sing a song that has no meaning hey. Hey. I was preaching in Ibadan mounted the podium like this and the anointing was so strong then something struck me and i knew i was struck so i, I looked for they thought it was i was teaching i looked for hey one seat <laughs> sat down and continued my teaching meanwhile i was managing strange pain and as I was doing that, I was trying to locate who they sent to come and test me. Because the thing was rising and it wanted to enter my brain. So when he got to my chest, I said, stop there. Stop there. He now stopped. I said, come out. I was beating him. I said, moving back. Moving back, moving back to the leg. I shook it out. Then I stood up again. Only me and that person knew... That, that the person was there with a dwarf. Uh -huh. Those of you that attended Festival of Glory, it was a dwarf that I saw. Somebody came with a dwarf today. today. Uh, have you ever seen a preacher who does a very powerful meeting and dies the next day? It's a dwarf. <laughs> Hallelujah. Meanwhile, as you are casting out those devils on the crusade, there is someone, a human being called a Charlie. A Charlie is, is a demon hanger. So as you are casting out the demons, the Charlie will be collecting them. That madman of Gadara was a Charlie that can house 2,000 devils. Oh, you are not with me. Not everybody is mad uh, unconsciously. Some of them are conscious of. Yes, yeah. It's a Charlie. 
and if you are going to hold the crusade many times they will come to gather the demons so that the demon doesn't they don't leave the territory if you check the argument that the demons were making with jesus you know that if they were casted out of that territory they will not have jurisdiction in other territories there is an iniquity in the land that that gives them legitimacy in that territory i've gone too far today and I couldn't name the types of, of paganism to the point of describing the one in Africa. Because paganism have, has different expressions in different continents. This thing I'm teaching you, it took me years to form these notes. Let's leave it for now. Let's leave it. One spirit that has it all. It's called the Holy Ghost. If his power is in him. If you want children, Holy Ghost. If you are sick, you need to be healed, Holy Ghost. Alright? You are afflicted, near miracle syndrome. What do you want? What do you need? Can you see Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 there? The Lord thy God is, is one God. The reason why that statement is the prime statement of Judaism is because the other nations don't believe that there is one. They will go to the gods of the sky. They will go and offer sacrifice to Poseidon, the god of the waters, so that they will you not allow breeze to blow on the sea so that they can travel. And in India, they have three million known gods they are still looking for others <laughs> we are going to pray sorry um, we couldn't go find the lecture maybe we'll try tomorrow but i want to equip you i want to arm you i want to arm you this night with these words if you don't know the holy ghost they will waste your life i'm, I'm talking to you you don't know him years will pass you will still be in that this same condition what is disturbing you is not as wicked as what disturbed us but we follow the holy ghost today we are even helpers of other men he said hear o israel the lord thy god is what is one god We are going to pray to him that is one and everything is encapsulated in him it was the holy ghost that the prophets meant when they said uh, 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 when they spoke was the holy ghost the the lord meant when he spoke to abraham and said that blessing that he bequeathed to abraham the blessing of abraham it was not in things it was in the holy ghost it was in the holy ghost you know my story I found the Holy Ghost. I found the Holy Ghost. I found the Holy Ghost. Come to my, my village. I come from a place of very spiritually educated people. Their God is the dead. Is the is death. Death. You know death? Necromancers. And when they begin to unleash that spirit, no development comes near anywhere. They are more vicious than witches, than warlocks. Necromancers. If you like, buy him new clothes today. After two weeks, it's, it's rags. Necromancers. We are here today because Satan is not the strongest. The Holy Ghost. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. We are going to pray. If the Lord gives utterance 
there are very complex things I need to teach but the reason why I'm teaching it is so that you can receive power and we are going to pray tonight very terrible prayer very terrible prayer I know what happened to me in 300 level the spirits that came I don't know who sent them but it was supposed to make me my heart I entered into a long prayer long prayer long prayer then the spirits left after two semesters two sem that's one session yeah I battled it for one session but I had some education at that time that it was spiritual so my only weapon was speaking in tongues so I learned how to speak in tongues for long and as long as they could not stop me speaking in tongues I broke the chain and I did not only break it many years later I went to preach among my people yokes broke when i was traveling back guess what happened accident because they sent a spirit the spirit can destroy the vehicle you are traveling with it can't touch you but the vehicle we rode that car like a bicycle to my body. but we still got it when you hear we wrestle we wrestle he's saying that there's going to be contact there's going to be contact because most of you think that because you are in Christ you are off limits may you not be taken off guard oh the moment we finished celebrating that my birthday I went I knew that I was put on the spotlight by the time I woke up in the morning I knew that Satan was waiting for me I knew he was there so I told everybody I wanted to travel go and sleep Go and sleep so we prayed that day and then the the road opened and while we were driving that my prado the gasket got burnt yeah that my prado no the gasket burnt i don't know what temperature we drove that car into just at what temperature i was still praying in the night i wake up because the only thing I learned is how to speak in tongues. And I will speak for long until God shows me a sign. The only thing I know is how to speak in tongues. And I've seen it displace demons over nations. Okay, let our media people come back now. That new car that we bought, the brake failed in a hold up. Because Satan wanted to kill by all means. Thank God there was an experienced driver. He just drove into the bush. Guess what? When we brought mechanic to tell us what happened, the brake was okay. Spirit. Aiko Salamo Korea. Isa Meti Akurama Santo. I went to a preach in Mina. I was in a crusade. And they brought convoy to pick me up i say i don't need a convoy they say that's the instruction that they gave them they can't break the instruction meanwhile they didn't know that i saw a crocodile and god told me this is the image of the spirit in this territory and he's looking for somebody desperately to devour this night i told the pro see carry this your vehicles back they were blowing siren whoa, whoa, whoa. We got there. The power of God on the field was massive. Souls were worn. I told them after the crusade, don't follow me with this thing. They say it's an instruction. That's how they had accident. And the alligator, he, he got many people that night. Do you know that problem? The problem of that accident took one calendar year. They had to do surgeries for people. I gave them a simple instruction. See, go and sit down. I'm sure of my covering. I'm not sure of you. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. They say, no, it's an instruction. I said, oh. 
At the end of the day, when that thing happened, they didn't follow me back again. They, 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 they left me. It is because, oh, you don't know, that spirits are against us. They are raised against us. But we know the one true God. We are going to pray tonight. And what I came here to do tonight as we pray is to unleash the strength of the one. Unleash the strength of the one. To consume any machination, any attempt, any intention of wickedness to keep you outside of Rehoboth. I'm a receiver. Amore sali Makuria. Asi sana mo se lebe zaboma. E abera bobo santori. Sali maleke la sobe. Sali malanto mene. Oh ho ho oh ho Saila nana mo marade na Yeah Yeah Sali nana mo se tamandele You will be two steps ahead of them that seek you
Jesus name hallelujah we are still praying okay I will soon be out of your way come come now we we have there, you know there are different kinds of ministry we have a traveling ministry when God begins to put an apostolic grace upon you it means you are going to travel from one place it's not like the pastor that finds fulfillment just in one space if you keep me here I will just fall one day you just see me here I will just fall can, can you pray for us as we go around our going out and coming in will be blessed just pray came to visit you. I said no. Yeah. No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Yeah. to give us room next year room for the actualization of your destiny that aspect of your life that has not had room maybe marriage maybe your finances have been locked up can you ask for room in that area right now ask for room ask for room 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 say badato selly ask for room Oh, 
point you pray it then we round up Acts 16 Acts 16 Acts 16 verse 26 Acts 16 verse 26 Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you there? Acts 16 verse 26 And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately, all the doors were open. How many doors? And everyone's bands were loosed. Why prophecy said we should address the area of our lives that we seek for the room, the enlargement, the rehobot to manifest. Suddenly, the scripture dropped on my mind. The what area will you even pray for? And which one will you leave out? So the scripture just dropped. Amen. You know, there is enough to address all the doors. And it is possible for all the doors in your life to be open. It is possible for what? It is possible for all the doors in your life to be opened. And then there is a collateral implication of this, of this dimension of God's visitation that every chains around you People around you in your family that are chained either in their legs or in their hands for their bands also to break in pieces. So I want you to go ahead and pray. Lord, as you are bringing this visitation, let it affect every area of my life. It will be too small an application to direct it to your marriage alone. If you are praying, Lord, let the door of my marriage be open and let me be married. That is too narrow. That is too narrow an application. If you are praying, visit my finance. That is too narrow an application. If you are praying, touch my life and heal my health. That is too narrow. If you are praying, unleash my potential. Activate my ministry. Activate my ministry. Activate my talent. Visit my family, that is too narrow. I want you to right now open your mouth and pray. Let all the doors, all the doors, all the possibilities, all the ordinations, the ordinations of my life, my talent, my ordination, my talent, my ministry, my call, my destiny, my money, my finance, my family, my marriage, all the human beings that are connected to my ministerial orbit, they are 
chains can be broken. Every single members of your family, even the members of your clan, all their chains can be destroyed. Ekele Hoga, Ulugu Bayoto, Morololo Kosilo, Epalidoli, Ikopelo, Elepedilo, Ikugudubana, Ilikabadia, Erekelikadi, Iketebele Nota, Elepedilo, Elepedili, Eketoni, Iketebelelo, Ratos Ekepeke, Roko Peke Kodo, Roko Peko, Reko Peko, Reko Peko, Reko Peko, Reko Peko, Reko Peko, Kemokosike to parota zuzuniki skeferia to balo Alo bogoniki koko marogo zizaniki skeferia to be Leto peke loho sisi niki to be Rato taku kupeko Rako parute niki salute Redini anto peredini ande Endelelele ho sini anto bereni anto In this season let no door escape in this season, let no door escape. In this season, let no chain escape. In this season, let no fetters escape. In this season, let no fetters escape. In this season, let no bondage escape. In this season, let no cause escape. In this season, let no evil covenant escape. In this season, let no attack escape. In this season, let no wish escape. In this season, let no wizard escape. In this season, let no sorcerer escape. In this season, let no suicide escape. In this season, let no suicide. Escape in this season. Let no sorcerer escape in this season. Let no enchanter escape in this season. Let no necromancer escape in this season. Let no divine divin diviner escape in this season. Let there be full scale intervention. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hele kemo kosi koto parota zuzuni kisko ferati da. Verita nuzi ziniki sko ferianto baruta zuzani koski fredi tabili. Baruto zuzani koski fredi tamina gas kalite preto boroto zuzani kisko feri tabili. Larato soto niko to baruta zuzi. Door of ideas. Door of innovations. Door of inventions. Door of strategies. Door of recoveries. Door of restoration. Door of acceleration. Door of increase. Door of enlargement, door of multiplication, door of rest, door of peace, door of marriage, door of wealth, door of money, door of ministry, door of anointing, door of grace, door of mercy, door of divine help, door of elevation, door of promotion, door of increase, door of actualization, door, all the doors, even the ones that we cannot name, as much as you are called a door. As much as you are known as a door, we speak to you. Be open. Be open. Let every chains, ancestral chains, generational chains, diabolical chains, witchcraft chains, every kind of chains be broken to pieces. Be broken to pieces. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please take your seat in a moment. Cast your offering. And if you are following us online, of course, those following us online, lay hold on the account detail and cast your offering. 
they wish to plant a seed for your tithe, your commitment to the building of the remnant embassy, the global headquarters of the remnant embassy project is ongoing. If you are inclined towards sowing a seed, go ahead and do that without reluctance. And cast every other different kinds of seed that you are moved to cast. Tomorrow we'll be back to this place by four o'clock. The pounding will continue. Make sure you make it a date. That is the account number on the screen. And then we have announced already that this Sunday it is going to be a Thanksgiving service. Somebody say Thanksgiving. We wish to gather here and thank the Lord. You see, it is very obvious, a matter of cheap intelligence, that human beings are very prone to forget. Human beings are rapidly inclined towards forgetting easily. You know, at the wake of this year, sometimes the first or the second quarters of this year, it was a big luxury to gather like this. You know, if you don't think you didn't, you can't even remember that anything like that happened. You needed somebody to prophesy to you specifically that that thing that is happening to you is not coronavirus for you to be convinced that you are not attacked. The fear was palpable. You could almost fetch it. You could almost touch it with your hand. If we gather here, we, we can't gather. It has to be one seat here, another one here, another one here, another one there. And when we look back now, we see how God has brought us the ugly prophecies, the evil prophecies, all of them had been discredited and, and, and neutralized. And here we are. But it is not only prayerlessness that God is angry at. Scarcity of thanksgiving also has the capacity to incur his displeasure. He said he will destroy them and not be. He said they refuse to consider the works of his hand, so he will destroy them. And not build them up. He said, Are there not ten that we are cleansed? Why is it that it is only one man that came? So let's come consciously to thank the Lord, to appreciate Him, to tell Him that we are grateful. It is one thing to do it alone at home, and it is another greater thing entirely to do it in the congregation of the brethren. And while we are preparing towards that, if you are moved to bring a car to celebrate the Lord, your own lot and portion is to buy a car and bring it, or cars, to bring it and thank the Lord. But we don't know that it is possible. You think it is not possible. If you think it is not possible, you are the only one that is thinking like that. Every other person has gone beyond that level. You are the only one in that class. And of course, during one of the Thanksgiving, somebody brought a car. And that time we have not even developed capacity like that. We have not gone global like this. Talk more of now that we are a global, we are a global citizen. <laughs> so if you are following us online or you are right here and you want to thank the Lord with cars, don't be bothered about how it will be used. There are more mouths to be fed. So bring those cars. If you want to bring cows, Want to bring turkeys or ostrich or, or he goat or she goats, but pig, don't bother with pig. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> or you want to bring money, you are in a in a haste. You don't have time to go and buy anything, just monetize the Thanksgiving and come. But by all means, arm yourself with something here. Let's come and thank the Lord. Amen. Please let's rise up now as we shut down. See you tomorrow. And then take notice also that Adulam registration is ongoing by February next year. The, the, the first section for the year will commence. So don't wait until they resume. 
you wait all the time until the week of resumption before some person will rush in and say, help me. You have all the time to do that now. Pick the form or reach the online person up. Punch the button adulam.ng and all the information you need will be furnished to you in order to aid the necessary action and reaction. Thank you so much for coming. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Thank you. Make sure you invite somebody with you as we explore this thing further tomorrow.